Brad TRT for Warriors coming at you with a reaction video to the Try Guys test who is more attractive and in this video they go into their testosterone levels we're gonna go through this together I may skip around a bit around a different couple of things but let's go on for the road scientifically of course hotness it's science baby what actually makes a man attractive today more than ever society and media appreciate hot men like us for instance and we wondered if that sexiness could be boiled down to a science we're here to find out if the prevailing theories about male beauty have any truth to them and we hear the test subjects the try guys are going to be conducting six experiments we're gonna draw our blood measure our faces and all sorts of wacky shit i'm gonna win all the categories today because i'm the most beautiful beautiful Keys in the rest. Where would we fall? 100 being the best, one being the worst you've ever seen. In the bottom 5%. Mm. Woof. This is a little tough, but if it means anything to you, I would happily penetrate each and every single one of you guys. <laughs> and since we're best buds and already know we're all super freaking hot, we decided to frame our series of experiments the way only the Try Guys can. As a game show! It's which Try Guy is scientifically the hottest with your ultra bangable host. Curly. My name is Dr. Curly. Hi, Dr. Curly. So you have the results? I do have the results, you nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Each of you guys were ranked. Whoever gets the lowest number is the sexiest. So it's like wow. the golf of hotness. Well, I hope I'm at least on par with the other guys. Stop it right now. <laughs> the first category is testosterone. If it's based on aggression, this will probably go to Ned. He's a very aggressive person. I better win the testosterone thing! You know, if I don't win the testosterone thing, it's all bullshit! Testosterone is linked to body hair and to hair loss. Your boy Zach got both of those! I Not exactly. DHT, a derivative of testosterone, is responsible for hair loss, but it's not necessarily accurate. I think that I'm gonna win this category because I have a ton of sperm in my blood. Whenever I get my blood taken out, they're like, wow, there's so much sperm in here. <laughs> testosterone is a very important male hormone. If a man doesn't have any testosterone, he loses a lot of characteristics that makes him a man. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Uh, so I think the last time we were together, we did uh, semen analyses on you. For the record, ladies have testosterone as well. It's at 2% of roughly of what uh, dudes have. And um, they are different ranges. Testosterone is not just a male hormone. And I learned a lot about you. What's your on vein percentage? Are you bad in the hundreds? I don't want to say because I'll jinx myself. So it's a simple blood test, and we get a relatively accurate measurement and figure out where, where men are on the spectrum. I bet you. This is pretty important. So we're talking about getting on a spectrum, we're looking at various blood work. It's not necessarily just testosterone. When you're looking at testosterone, you need to be looking at it in totality. So that includes total, free testosterone, thyroid, your prostate, your follicle-stimulating hormone, throw in cortisol, and let's throw in some other cascade hormones, pregnenolone, and various other precursor hormones to make sure that the total person is healthy. We talk about TRT. We're not really talking about TRT. We're talking about endocrine optimization, but it's too difficult to say that, and in a video, it's just easier to say testosterone. That sperm has gotten into blood once and been like, whoa, where am I? Eugene doesn't love needles. Shut up. Yeah, it's like my veins are just, they're hidden. You wanna look at the other arm? Oh no. Don't watch it fart sound when it goes in. You're doing great, sweetie. Men with high levels of testosterone tend to have a very high sex drive. Muscle mass is another thing. Kind of giving me blood. My blood is very blood. selfish. If you look at it from that perspective, then he may appear more attractive. We have to go back to the right side. Let's take a look. Are you fucking serious right now? I'm not a cow. Is it still inside of me? Not anymore. How much sperm is typically in the bloodstream? <laughs> Zero. Makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes no sense at all. So we have the results. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I know a lot of guys look like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> the runner-up for the most testosterone is... Kiwi Poo! Oh, oh, that's incredible! Wow. wow, there's so much sperm in my blood! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number one. Dun, 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 dun. It's Eugenia! Wow! wow. Have you seen how hairy his legs are? I do have very hairy legs. Yeah, that's oh, hairy legs. Daddy. You guys ready for number three? No, this I is don't so even funny. know. The very sexy, the zaddy. Oh, no. <laughs> don't worry, Ned. I nope. really thought Ned would be number one. There's no scientific data that correlates the level of testosterone to the level of... Let's just take a look at this for a second. 
So while the doctor was in their quip, you know, they probably asked him like a you know general bunch of questions all at one time. This is B-roll footage. This isn't him looking at the actual values. Okay, I'll give him that. But looking at this, literally every single one of these guys are hypogonadal. That means they have a dysfunction going on. This means that they're in the range of a technic well, the top guy's technically in a normal range of a guy who's in his 80s. That's healthy, okay? So this normal range of a total testosterone, which we're using T-score, which I guess is a good way to say it, but it should just be total testosterone, learn what you're talking about, and talk about it in direct language. And that's total testosterone. Okay, so all these guys are sick. They're not healthy. Every single one of them. And they live in an industrialized society. I'm just going to assume, since they work for a media organization, they live in a city. They're exposed to city chemicals, whatever's in the water. Um, and every single one of these guys are sick. I mean, it's it's pretty disturbing. And uh, one of the doctors should have uh, talked to him about this. He's a urologist. So we're going to go through um, in the endocrine news here. Um, a study of more than 9,000 men in the United States and Europe has defined a harmonized range of total testosterone in non-obese men, 19 to 39. And rigorously derived reference ranges are essential for distinguishing healthy from diseased individuals, constitute a foundation of our contemporary approach, making diagnosis for clinical disorders. Well-defined reference ranges are at the heart of clinical practice, and without them, blah, blah, blah. The researchers obtained testosterone levels from men who had already had their testosterone levels assayed locally, which I don't know if that means they were sick and they went in to go get their uh, testosterone checked, um, which would be funny if that is the truth. Um, the samples were sent to the CDC, the National Center for Environmental Health, were measured using a higher order liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry. So I think that's LCMS. There's like a T in there, so I'm not really sure if that's LCMS, but I'm pretty sure that is. It's the fancy sensitive testing, which is good. It's pretty important. They need to do that. Um, there's other methods and they're just not as accurate. Um, they then use the results from both measurements to generate harmonized values, which are in turn used to derive standardized age specific reference ranges overall. The harmonized reference the harmonized normal range for testosterone in non-obese population of European and American men, 19 to 39 years old, is 264 to 916. Okay, well, this is not the same as the one in 2016. So in 2016, the healthy guy is supposedly um, 1600 or 1100, somewhere around there, and then you know 300 is hypogonadal. Well, you're telling me now that there's a hundred percent, not a hundred percent, or whatever, whatever two hundred to three hundred is, the ten percent or whatever that number would be, difference between 2016 and then today. But then testosterone levels were at two thousands about a hundred years ago. So which one's correct, the one from 2016 or the one from a hundred years ago, and why? Like, no, they don't explain that. They just say, oh, this is a harmonized reference range of sick people in an industrialized society of European and American men on two different continents who may happen to be genetically connected. But And then we're just throwing American men in there. Okay, well, which American men? Are you talking about Eurasians? Are you talking about Japanese guys who technically their testosterone levels are much lower than Europeans? So now that value is then being associated to Welsh warriors and to Norwegians? No, that's just not true. That cannot possibly be true. You cannot extrapolate an African American guy to a Norwegian guy and say that they're the same. That no. And then what about you know Native Hawaiians and Polynesians and Filipinos that are they happen to be in the Americas? No, that's just not true. That can, and you cannot base that. It, when we go through other different studies or whatnot, um, we're going to go through where they're going to state that to diagnose hypogonadism, we base things off of symptoms. We do not base it off of a range. Any doctor who says you're at the low end of a normal range, walk away as fast as you possibly can because they don't know what they're talking about. That's just what they've been told because it's not really their job. If they're a primary care or a general practitioner, or nurse prac, and an emergency room doctor because you passed out because your testosterone level zero, they're not going to know. And it's not really their job. In their defense, you know, they, 
their job is to patch up gunshot wounds, to give you flu medicine, and to send you on the, on your way. Their job is not to harmonize your testosterone and look at your SHBG and your estradiol and your pregnenolone and, oh, testosterone's in women? Right, that's not their job. So, joking about it or whatnot, you know, it uh, it is what it is, but um, it's pretty important to... to no one understand where you need to get your health care from because it's definitely not going to be your general practitioner. Attractiveness, but certainly there's something there. This was supposed to be my category. I'm fucked. Yeah, me too, Zach. Me too. Next category, guys, is BMI. This is pretty important when we're talking about uh, general health and uh, testosterone levels. So when someone comes into your office and say you're a doc, and the first thing that you should be doing is obviously they're blood work and then their BMI and then getting to know their nutrition, right? All those kind of things need to be taken into account and also what other medications that they're on because there are medications that lower your testosterone. So specifically, if someone's on depressive medications, women that are on um, birth control, those are steroids. Those are, an well, not maybe anabolic, but they might be uh, uh, androgenic um, to uh, steroids, but they are steroids. I mean, they do in bodybuilding, if you were on birth control, they'd pop you for being on steroids because you're introducing a medication that's going to up your anabolic or androgenic activity and then raise the levels of your testosterone, lowering your estradiol, and then you're not technically fertile, right, because you're taking that medication. Well, it's a steroid. So we're giving steroids to young women at 14 years old. They're taking this for a certain amount of time. Then they're in their 20s, clock's ticking, and they find out by the time they're 30 that they're infertile, and it takes them years of medications and treatment to then finally be able to get um, anywhere near fertile, and this also... Um, then comes in line with men. When we're looking at BMI, you're also looking at adipose tissue. Well, then the adipose tissue has what's called aromatase. Aromatase takes your testosterone and steals it. It takes it away inside of SHBG and probably albumin, but these are regulation signals, and they steal your testosterone, and then um, that would then, when we have a, a common saying of, oh, that person is high estrogen. Well, high estrogen means that they have high aromatase, which just means that adipose tissue is stealing your testosterone and you're not as healthy as you should be. So when we're looking at these guys, they're going to show you these different uh, men, and they're going to have you know, different BMIs, and it doesn't actually line up to their testosterone levels, which I find interesting. But it does correlate. So if you have someone who's obese, they probably need testosterone replacement. Pretty much the hard and vast of it. Measures your fat. This comes down to me or Ned. So maybe I'll win BMI. Ned's got that big old butt, and that's gonna weigh him down. I think that I'm gonna win this category. I got the most mass in my body. Should I take my pants off before? No, you're good. BMI is one way to calculate overall fat levels in a guy. 170.2. 136 on the dot. 167 on the dot. It's 191.4 pounds. How tall are you? The higher your body mass index is, means that you're wider. Oh, all these guys are skinny I fat. In high school having low BMI. This is super interesting. You can have. They're hypogonadal, skinny fat, and unless you're endo or you're a functional medicine or you're an endocrinologist and you actually check their blood. For the general population, it's better to have a low BMI than a high BMI. Let's just hear this. That part was pretty important about the BMI, but having a lower than a high. The opposite would actually be probably after in your uh, later years, so from your 50s into your 70s, uh, the more sickness that you get and the more um, opportunities that you have for a long-term illness and where you're going to have muscle wasting, the higher BMI that you have may possibly be better. But we'd want to say that your bone mineral density and your anabolic or muscle um, holding is more important so obviously in the younger guys being skinnier is better but once you get older you probably want more weight on you which then would mean that you want to be optimized you want to have more testosterone more androgens in your body more ability to stave off uh, illnesses by having more muscle not necessarily bmi for the sake of bmi but uh, being a, in a more muscular um, type of in uh state instead of having so much adipose tissue being fat and obese is not the same as having a higher bmi results and if it makes you feel any better there's a whole gay community that loves chubby guys so you're in with us okay okay <laughs> runner up Jane. 
Cool. Ooh, second wow. place. Number one. Come on. You know it. Zach. This tiny fuckable body over here. My body's hotter than Eugene's. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Sexiness. Number three. This key. Oh, wow. Um, wow! It's a relatively okay surrogate for men's health, but it's not perfect. What kind of exercise do you get? I play soccer. I'm going to CrossFit. Uh, we have a lot of stairs in the office, and sometimes I go between floors. Yo, Ned, check this out. I'm less flabby than you. <laughs> Imagine an NFL running back. Those guys have a terrible body mass index, but nobody's going to tell them they're not in shape. You're stacked, though, bro. Thanks, man. I have the lowest BMI, but I'm also about to break. <laughs> What's next? Beautiful face. That was pretty important about the uh, the BMI piece, and uh, uh, specifically, I mean, those guys, the, the testosterone levels uh, and their activities don't line up to their hypogonadal state. So any doctor just says, oh, you work out, you're fine. It's not scientific as their opinion, but it's not a, a barometer of, uh, of health. So something important here that I kind of wanted to mention is the fact that um, when they were looking at um, these pictures of the face and just how the differences are, we're talking about astonalization, we're talking about being a dude. Um, the guy with the higher testosterone actually had the most chiseled jaw. Now he's English or some sort of other uh, European or whatnot, so he's going to, it might technically just be genetic or whatnot, but there are genetic levels of testosterone which are probably different than those guys and that would probably produce that. But in, in terms of masculinization, we're talking about that, it's pretty important to know that if you have higher testosterone, you're going to have more angling of the jaw and more sharper features because of the amount of bone density that you're increasing inside of the body. Reproductive health. So go Keith. Let's talk about Zach. So this is normal me. So oh, handsome. Wow. Oh. This is just my left side mirrored. Oh. He's a jock. He looks like a rugby player. Yeah. I'm like pretty into that. He looks taller. The other side must be worse looking. And this is the right side. <laughs> Weird. I don't like this version of me. Wow. Yeah. Like a literal egghead. This is my left side. Mm -hmm. So that means that's my good side? Yeah. So Zach's face is relatively petite. When we look at the tip of his nose to the top of his forehead, we're able to see that Zach has a relatively larger forehead than the average individual. So Zach has what we like to call a natural lip. And that's really a very attractive feature and very much a strong signal of biological fitness. What's attractive about a tiny mouth? Nothing. You can't put anything in there. <laughs> so here's my face. Wow. The Transporter 3 starring Eugene Lee Yang. Am I the person who gets transported? No, no, you're I just feel like he's Statham. transporting Asians. This is the left side of my face. Your hair is no. amazing! Hair is you just went Super Saiyan! Very symmetrical. Eugene is relatively high fast forward through some of this. Of the medium jawline. So, which makes him the most... They're all very good looking. A bad. It's time to make... Delicious. I like it because it smells like a dude. I could not smell anything on B. A ghost wore that shirt. Not a man. Oh, I like to be much better than Aiken still. It just was the freshest. My least favorite, I think, was B. He shows up and you're like, I don't like this guy. C? I was like, I want to be that guy's friend. C is my favorite. Really? Yes. Like an after sex shower smell. I wasn't that excited about C. I remember C. things that were worse, and it was definitely C and D. I don't agree. I like D a lot. It just had mm. like a nice calming smell. D was my favorite. D would take you to a crab shack on the beach. Now this is super interesting. I'm not sure if all those uh, chicks were actually straight, but it is interesting that it does correlate to the guy who actually is straight, that the other women who actually liked him were straight, and um, <laughs> there's something there. And oddly enough, uh, I can't remember if he had... No, it's it's A who had the higher testosterone. Um, and I think it went C. It was either C or A, but it wasn't definitely D, which is super strange. Um, although he happens to be the one straight guy. So yeah, I'm not sure if that means anything. It was like <laughs> best two worse. Really, I feel the other way around. Yeah. The Try Guys are known for a lot of things, and smelling bad is not one of them. There's really not much out there in the scientific literature. So yeah, go for it. By all means, don't let science get in the way of a really good time. <laughs> <laughs> That is a super important thing. So obviously, you know, there's testosterone levels and whatnot, but it doesn't necessarily correlate to how attractive um, that your smell may be through pheromones, although we need a clinical study. So anybody who's out there who wants to get with a researcher and, and do a, um, a, normal, a normal level of a, a one gram of testosterone a week, let's, uh, let's go do a, uh, my, uh, my normal TRT um, 
<laughs> dose. Um, it's a clinical procedure, as the joke goes. <laughs> the runner-up, number two. Next. My wife does like my snacks. So Zach got third, and I lost. What's so next? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly the order. All the gay men like to smell the most. I that's to, so I funny. That. You smell a little bit more masculine. Thank you. The bottom line is, it just comes down to how they smell. That's what brings them together: is that global smell rather than some molecular attraction. Oh, I honestly. How are you gonna all set up Tinder profiles? I've never created a, an online dating app ever. Well, you're not creating an app, you're creating a profile. See, I already can't use words correctly. None of the other guys have ever done this before. I'm excited, I think you're gonna like it. I think there's some things you won't like. So, in theory, Zach should have this. What do you think this photo says about you, Zach? So my first photo, me looking hot. I'm looking off to the side, it's cute. I got style, but I'm approachable. Number one, you're wearing glasses, and while you have very nice glasses, you've reduced the likelihood of being swiped right on by 15%. By wearing a hat, you're reducing your likelihood of being swiped right on by 12%, because it also obstructs your eyes. By facing forward, you increase your likelihood of being swiped right on by 20%. <sighs> I am losing percentages like crazy right yes, now. Yes, your stock value is plummeting. I read in a different online dating book that men's photos perform better when they look off camera. I would argue with my PhD, which took six years in my research at Tinder and interviewing people globally about online dating, that I might know just a little more. <laughs> I think you do. Okay. I met my wife before online dating was a thing, so I have absolutely zero experience making profiles. I found. Well, let's uh, comment on that for a second. The fact that our generations have gone through this, uh, you meet people in person or you're in a small town, right? And there's uh, the Robinson family and the Harris family or whatnot, and everybody kind of knows each other and everybody dates each other, right? And you're kind of, you know, in this group and pretty much everybody interdates and intermarries and whatnot, right? And then you introduce this, okay, so now we have lower testosterone levels, now we're adding in technology. Now you're um, having to look at somebody and you kind of know what you're looking at, but you don't really get like a real vibe, right? And then you end up in a uh, in a situation, or you're at a Starbucks or something like that, and you're you're trying to get to know somebody or whatever. And uh, the signals in which that you normally would go off of are not like working functionally. And then throw in the testosterone levels on a hypogonadal guy who uh, is not going to be as assertive as he needs to be, or his pheromones are where he needs to be, or he hasn't accomplished what he needs to be because hormones are all fucked up. Well, obviously then. Um, nothing's gonna go right. I found it very hard to find photos of just me. This whole thing feels weird, but here we go. Here's one, it's me in a cool Florentine jacket next to a line of Vespas. Ooh, is he 18% Italian? I don't know, let's find out. Are you in Italy or in Europe? I am in Italy or Europe. So that's a good conversation starter. People are going to want to know more about you. This is wonderful, Excellent. except you're not smiling in the first photo. Can me just remark on the fact that um, somehow Europe is now an amorphous blob? That the Flemish or Welsh don't exist, or the uh, Belarusians, or name your European tribe. Oh, I need to and be smiling? Yes, because it makes you seem kind and approachable. I want to remain totally unrelatable, generally, in life. So is Tinder not for people who smirk over smiling and are potentially evil inside? That gets into a more philosophical question about whether people are fundamentally evil. This is one of my best friend's babies. If you can see, the baby is terrified of me. Correct! <laughs> this says nothing about you. This says a lot about me. To the left. Oh, fuck. This went huge on Twitter, so I'm, I'm tapping in. So you did something that went huge on Twitter? I didn't. I recreated it. But don't you want to be original and lead with your own lines, lead with your own story? A rusty bathtub outside? Wow, this guy likes to have fun. Well, I didn't know that you were outside. I just thought you wanted to get tetanus. No, I already have my vaccinations. Oh, Thank well, that's you. good. What do you think this photo says about you? Um, that I like standing against dumpsters. I hate this photo. I'm cute as fuck in that photo. I'm smiling kindly. You're not smiling kindly. You look like you're up to something. Up to kindness. Let's go on to Is that a Hebrew character on your necklace? It is. Okay. Does that earn me any points because I'm Jewish? Not particularly in this context. Okay. How about this one? Oh, this will get all the girls to swipe right. A photo of you with your wife on your wedding day. You are abusing animals. The dog looks like it's... <laughs> Actually, uh, there we go. Pro tip for the guys who've been divorced, I guess, the, you know, throw your old wedding pictures up. He's tortured in the back. He's having a great time. This is my head as a cake. I hate this. We can skip my bio. We don't no, have No, no, okay. bios are critical. Great, I'll it. never do you. Dirt, dirt, dirt. That's a Rihanna lyric. Are you Rihanna? People love Riri. I like white wine and traveling the world. Let's split a bottle and get to know each other. Yeah. I like white wine and traveling the world, but we may have nothing in common. Let's split a bottle and talk about it. Loves dogs. 
hates babies. Should I have written more? Hey ladies, let's fall in love. Each day that passes with each of us remaining alone is one less day of bliss. Kisses your future heart. <laughs> it's, it's poetic. I've analyzed thousands and thousands and thousands of profiles. On a scale of one to a hundred, where would ours fall? In the bottom 5%. Mm. Woof. Woof woof. It's a race for last place on Tinder. All of us suck at it. I thought I'd be at the end of my career when I got roasted, but apparently it happened now. So the runner up is Zeddy Zach. Wow, oh, thank oh. goodness. Remember, you were still in the bottom 5% <laughs> of all of Tinder. This is really a hollow victory. So the number one person is Ned. Wow, oh, yay. I'm great at a service I can never use. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Well, not if you give her the frisky lady who uh, is on Tinder to bring home uh, special friends for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, because if I'm worse than a pick a child abuser, I would be very upset. Guys, I think we all had very fun, cute profiles. I would swipe right on all of them. I'm going to win this one because everyone likes me. You guys ready for the results? Well, you can't call me not based on looks. Some tech the day keeper. Successful they be, so my god. I'm gonna win this category. <laughs> it's interesting to know that there are scientific factors that correlate to your attractiveness, but it doesn't always correlate to how much someone wants to date you. What I love about the Try Guys is they are willing to try anything. You can measure anything you want down to the molecular level, but at the end of the day, throw science out the window and just be attracted to who you're attracted to. You guys have and that is where we're going to come to our uh, our end here. So going through this, you know, I've watched this a couple of times. And to be honest, I actually did like multiple um, tries with this. And I had like a bunch of audio issues. So I've watched this like a thousand times. And I'm super excited to never have to watch this again. <laughs> um, being honest. Um, more because I had to listen to myself and all the audio was all jacked up. Um, but in any case, so this is pretty interesting, right? So we have a, a group of guys who are generally supposed to be healthy. They're in an industrialized society. They're in L.A. or they're in New York or something like that. And uh, we're supposed to be at the pinnacle of the world and Western civilization. And uh, we're supposed to have the best healthcare system in the entire world and the best society in the entire world. And yet every single one of them are hypogonadal. No doctor has been able to... Uh, uh, catch this before um, its effects have taken place. You look at their bodies or whatnot so far in any of these BMI things, they're all skinny fat. None of them have any substantial muscle. Pretty much all of them probably have some issues with uh, with energy and sex drive and uh, drive in their lives. And I bet it takes them hours and hours just to get up and awake and uh, be able to perform and do their you know high functioning jobs or whatnot. And uh, they'd be a thousand times more uh, happier and excited and funnier just by having uh, the right type of hormones at the right levels that they need to be. Um, and I hope that this doctor actually intervened because they're not healthy. They're sick, and they need to be treated, uh, bottom line. So um, that's where we're going to end it. We're going to go into other topics and whatnot when it comes to TRT um, and hormone optimization in general. Um, and we'll get into specifics. We'll get into the different methodologies and the different uh, ways that you can get treatment. Then we'll go into traumatic brain injury, and we'll go into primary and secondary hypogonadism, and we'll have some fun along the way. So thank you for uh, viewing um, this awesome uh interesting uh video of the try guys that i uh did my review on and check out trt for warriors on facebook uh that's where we have the bulk of the the folks that are there we have doctors that are inside the group and you can ask questions so if you're just interested in it or you need treatment you can talk to a doctor and find out um which is really awesome and um it's all completely uh, private and so you're able to ask different questions inside the forum and you don't um, need to uh, put air that out or whatnot um, in, into the public and um, from what it's looking like so far I'm gonna do maybe a video a month or whatnot might have multiple or whatnot but um, I'm gonna try to do the best that I can to keep up with my health because I got shit that I'm dealing with and um, be able to keep up with uh, doing this and give you guys some uh, interesting um, videos and uh, throwing some natty or nots or fake natty or nots <laughs> just for the hell of it and uh, catch you guys on the next episode